We have seen the pictures during this pandemic. Doctors and nurses on the front lines of the fight. Nurses playing a particularly important role, even more so than when normal, when they are the source of comfort and care for so many of us in so many different circumstances. Last week was celebrated on behalf of nurses as National Nurses Week. But, you know, the fact is that it's Nurses Week every week, if we want to be honest about that. Lori Shoemaker knows all about the challenges and struggles of our nurses on the front line. She is a senior vice president and chief nursing officer at St. Luke's Health. She's also seen their everyday successes. Lori, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Um, the challenges of nurses across the globe have been broadly documented. Uh, tell me about what your nurses in the St. Luke system are facing and what concerns you have as we head into a, another week of dealing with this COVID-19. Sure. Um, well, I would say to you that my concerns dealing with week 11 or 12 as we go into that are far different than they were when we were facing week three and four. One of the challenges with this is that this disease is is very changing, ever changing, if you will. There's little known about that. And so there's really not a playbook of how to take care of these patients. There's not pathways or protocols that we have for several other disease states that we have. And so the recommendations then that are coming from our government officials um, for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention are ever changing. And so we have to keep up with them and make sure that we are keeping uh, our staff abreast of the latest things that we need to be doing to take care of these patients. So again, we'll see what week 12 brings um, with some changes from the CDC. The other thing I would say is, as a concern is that these patients are very, very sick. Most of them end up in our intensive care units. They're on life support, not just ventilators, but they're on heart lung bypass machines, much like patients who are in the operating room having open heart surgery. These patients are on these machines in our ICUs for days and sometimes even weeks. So they're really, really sick patients. Um, we're so, of course concerned about a potential of a second surge um, that we may see out there. Um, we're much better prepared for that, I would say. And I think that we need to focus on uh, really the 23,000 people in Texas who have recovered from this. So we do know that people recover from this right. disease. We also know that in Houston, I would say we have done an incredible job in Harris County of taking care of these patients. If you think about, we've had what over 8,400 cases of this and only a two, a little over a 2% death rate. Now, I don't minimize that because, you know, death, we don't want anybody to die, though somebody's mother and father or brother, sister, et cetera. Right. But if you think about that compared to New York, which was somewhere around 8%, um, clearly we're doing a lot of great things right here in the Texas Medical Center. And so I'm, I think we need to keep that focused as well. Much as and the last thing I would say, uh, Cambrell, is that we need to be concerned about the well-being and mental health of our staff. And we've really done a lot to try to keep their spirits up, their morale up, um, to the point where we've had cookies and ice cream and all kinds of fun things we're trying to do for them. And we even opened up the Serenity Spa and it looks just like a spa on the 18th floor of Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center. So we're doing everything we can to keep their spirits up. So talk about that personal emotional toll that your nurses are in because many times they end up being the last person that a dying patient may see because family members can't get there. That, that has to be a horrific toll yeah. that it takes on your nurses. Yes. So I, I'd say, first of all, it is a true honor and a privilege to take care of people in their most vulnerable state. Um, that's what nurses do. That's what we're very, very good at. Um, we, the patients come to us, they're scared, they're sick. And so we do everything we can to heal them um, and get them back to, into their home and uh, with the education that they need to keep themselves well, right? But we are also no strangers to death. And in the end of life situation, then our, our job is to ease their pain and suffering and have them have a dignified death. What's changed about this is that not only are the nurses the caregivers taking care of these patients and all of their needs, but we're substituting as surrogate family members as well. And so it is the nurse because of the restricted visitation, it really, it's the nurse who is sitting with the dying patient, who's holding their hand. 
we've had family members uh, record their voices and their messages and the last things they want their family members to hear. And we play that tape for them um, for the, so that they can hear that as well. Right. Um, and so we really have done everything we can to make sure that no one dies alone. And that certainly does take its toll on the nurse. We've got and if you could indulge me for one second, I just want to read an excerpt from a letter that a nurse received, and I think it sums it all up, if I may. It says, Dear nurse, our dad passed away at one of your hospitals on April 7th. He was under your care in ICU, and due to the coronavirus, we, the children, were unable to be with him in his final moments. It does give us great comfort knowing he didn't pass alone. Your compassion and the care you and the staff gave him eases our hearts just knowing someone caring was standing in for him and holding and holding his hand. His children and family want to express our deep regard and thanks for making sure he had the gift of touch from someone when he passed. Dad was laid to rest and again we were denied any regular visitation and burial due to the virus. We plan on having a celebration of life when it is allowed. If we do, please attend if you can so we can thank you face to face. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for standing in as another daughter. Lord that Shoemaker. Was an emotional letter for that nurse to receive. It is, sure. but it says a lot about what you and your nurses are doing. Thank you for being here this morning and showing us a little bit about what your nurses go through each and every day. As I said earlier, it's National Nurses Week last week, it's this week, it's next week, and then the weeks ahead too, because you do so much for all of us in our time of need. Thank you so much for being here. And good You're luck welcome. as you go Thank and you continue to me. stay on the front lines of this battle. Thank you.